Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this course, the, the lecture for this course on um, media and technology in ministry. Um, we have uh, gone through this chapter uh, on uh, uh, digital equipment. Um, so we'll just kind of quickly uh, review that and then we will go forward into our next chapter, which is on the software systems uh, that we want to discuss uh, for the use of media, uh, for the use of technology in ministry. That's what we will do today. Let's have a quick word of prayer and then we will get started. Okay, Aaron, would you please uh, pray if, if your mic is okay? I'm sorry. If, uh, if your mic is not okay, then no problem. I'll, somebody else can pray or maybe... Okay, maybe Aaron's mic is not okay. I forgot about that. Okay. Um, Conan, could you pray with us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you. In this morning that you come to your throne and help us to come before you. And uh, As we are going to study uh, this media and technology, Lord, help us uh, so that we can understand well and Apply in our ministry in the coming days, Lord, and bless us in this time, and Holy Spirit, uh, guide us so that we can equip in your way. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, so we, uh, over the last um, several weeks, we've been talking about digital equipment where I uh, went through, or we went through together, um, several different you know, areas where we need to become familiar with the kind of equipment that we are using uh, for ministry, ministry purposes with the church and so on. Uh, we talked about some of the software that uh, we use. Uh, we talked about the um, camera photography, uh, some information about cameras. We talked about the PA system or the sound system. Uh, then we talked about, um, just running through the, the documents here, uh, we uh, talked about the video production, how do you make videos, some of the things that are involved, the equipment and then uh, lighting, how we go about doing the videos. And then finally, we spoke a little bit about live streaming. Uh, we can live stream to many different platforms, and that's very important uh, these days, especially under lockdown, people were connecting online, or watching services online, and so on. And uh, uh, very interestingly, you know, um, uh, we, uh, since we reopened uh, our services um, since February this year, um, we, we kind of re resumed. We did resume in between for brief times. We had to close down again and so on. And now in February, we again reopened our, our church services, in-person services. Very interestingly, uh, I met a few families. Um, so at least I'm thinking about three families who came personally to me and said, you know, they were watching our online services from another city during the lockdown. And then they moved to Bangalore um, for whatever reason, so they had to relocate. And now they are coming and attending in-person services. So, uh, so for, for, you know, for over two years, they were watching online from another city. Then, you know, whatever happened, job or school, college, family, they, they moved to Bangalore. Now they are coming, attending in-person services. So I, I found that very interesting that, you know, when we were doing live streaming, we didn't know, you know, we don't know all the time, you know, who all watch, who all are watching the services. Of course, uh, in YouTube and uh, uh, in the analytics side, you could go and you could see which people from which countries have been watching. So that data is there. Uh, we, we know that data, but we don't know the individuals. Uh, uh, and then when you later on meet some of these people and they come and tell you, you know, uh, hey, We've been watching the live stream. It's been a blessing. Um, uh, that 
it's, it's very encouraging that you know that live streaming has been in you know, somebody's watching far away different cities and that then now they're coming in person so uh, live streaming has become something very useful for the church for ministry to reach out to people so uh, and 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 the, the, the thing is uh, there are it's continuing so even though in-person services have opened up and there are people who are coming uh, or who are slowly returning, you know, getting back to in-person services. Uh, we are we are seeing that our attendance on the live stream and those who watch either while the live stream has happened or those who watch after, you know, at a later point, um, that number has either stayed steady or actually is on the right increase. So that is also an interesting observation and I'm not sure I can always explain why, but it seems like that um, uh, there are people yeah. who have, um, you know, uh, adapted to the idea of listening to sermons and receiving spiritually through online media. You know, so even though our service is open and lo lots of people are coming back in person, the 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 the, the attendance or the the view viewership of the online service has not drastically fallen. And when you look at also those who watch the service online, and you can see all this data on on YouTube, uh, it's actually increasing. So that's an interesting observation so i'm just trying to share that with you so that uh to say that you know live streaming of services is something yeah you know we should really think about and continue pursuing then the last thing which we saw yesterday was just a little bit about you know stage design how we can use uh, uh, led panels and lights play with that and uh, you know just make the stage look nice uh, when you are having your services and uh, i will give you the document um, for the last couple of classes i will upload it now i will also mention the two software uh, that we use uh, to control the graphics that come on the led panels and also the lighting of uh, the stage right uh, and or the panels so i will just mention software just for good for you to know so that when you do um you know get into the stage where you're using led panels make sure you have these these two uh, pieces of software on your computer and you connect to the control the led panel control and from your computer from your laptop you can actually control what's coming on the led change the graphics change the intensity the lighting all of that so basically uh, it's a very, very easy way to control your stage design. Uh, we also use it for our video recordings. So, you know, in it, one option for a video recording is you have to create the set. That means, uh, you know, you have to physically move chairs and tables and props and all that and make it look the way you want it. The other option is you have a LED panel and you can play with the graphics and the lights create your set for the TV recording. So that's also an interesting option which we started using these days. So, you know, there's, it's very easy because you're controlling it through your computer. You don't have to worry about, you know, I have to bring this thing and bring this prop and bring this prop to create a set for a TV recording. So that's again, another option. Okay. So with that, we leave our thoughts about uh, digital equipment and so on, um, finish that chapter. And the last chapter I just want to get started with today, and we will continue this next week, is to talk about software um, systems, yeah, or uh, uh, software platforms, uh, or software systems, um, which we need to use in our re which I'm not saying which are available for our use in uh, ministry. Now, some of these things I covered, um, I think, uh, in uh, last year or la last semester, I forget, when, we, uh, when I mentioned to you different soft piece of software, software systems that we use. So some of this 
uh, maybe overlapping or maybe a little repetition, uh, but for the sake of completeness, I will mention them again. Uh, but in our in our use of media and uh, technology for the work of the ministry, uh, making use of software systems is uh, is very important. Right? So we will start off with the very basic. That is, um, uh, any church or ministry these days, you know, should should have people, the staff in the church in the uh, church office, uh, should be comfortable uh, working with uh, office software. So that means uh, the software that we generally use to. Uh, for word processing, that is your word processor. Whether so, whether you know, of course, you know, you can use Microsoft products, or but then those are licensed products. You got to pay for licensing, which is okay now. Nowadays, it's very reasonable. Now, Office three sixty five, you can get it at a very reasonable price, so you can use those products. So, if you're using Apple, you can use products that are, you know, related with Apple, or you could use uh, the free or uh, Google. Products. So you could you know use Google Docs, uh, Google Sheets, Google Presentations, uh, which is all free. So all you need is a computer, and you connect to the internet, and you could use these things. But these um, pieces of software for office uh, productivity are important, and I want to encourage you know all of us, um, as well as you know when you hire staff, or even if you have volunteers in your Christian ministry or in the church working, uh, it's important just to get them all to you know learn how to use uh, these basic software products, right? So uh, I, our goal here is just to say that look, these are things that you could use, and uh, these are things that uh, you uh, it's good to have people on your team use. So you're moving more and moving away from just paper uh, into just doing everything digitally. And so, for instance, uh, what we are doing, uh, uh, you know, when we started, say, you know, 20 years ago, uh, our membership forms were paper forms, people had to write their name and sign paper. So now we have moved our membership application just online. And so anybody, you know, I mean, the person people who are interested, can just go online, fill up a membership form, they submit, it immediately becomes a PDF and it is sent for review. And once it's reviewed, you know, so the whole membership application itself, we are moving away from getting people to fill in a paper form to doing it uh, online and immediately get it as a PDF. It's stored as a PDF. So you, you're not storing paper. Now we have these physical files of membership forms that people filled up, you know, the last. Uh, 20 some years, but now we have, you know, you can imagine we have files in, in church office, all paper, but now we're saying, okay, let's just do it as PDF because, you know, it, we don't need to store all these big files and how long are we going to store them? Similarly, water baptism forms, you know, so if somebody wants to have, to, you know, be water baptized, they fill in a physical form. Um, and then we have to keep a record of it that they have filled up the form physically and signed. Uh, but now we've moved that off digitally, right? So they fill up an online form. We have a PDF. Of course, we have a record of it, uh, but it's stored digitally. So we don't need these, you know, stacks of files with paper that people have signed. So I'm just giving a simple example. Where even these regular things that we do, um, it's good to move them to, you know, just getting people to do things online using software systems so that uh, we don't have to worry about physically storing paper here and there, you know, then you're going to take care of the file. And if any, if the file is damaged or the paper is lost, um, how, what do you do? Whereas uh, when you have something stored digitally, you can make copies, keep it in multiple places. And, um, you know, and it's also, it doesn't take up physical space. Uh, and storing those things. So I'm just, you know, sharing that if we get people to use these office tools, uh, things can, you know, and going forward, that's probably the way uh, to do things. So we are transitioning from 
paper-based work to digital work where we are creating digital documents and storing these things digitally. So at a very basic level, you know, if we just look at what Google offers us, and this, this is probably common uh, knowledge for many, many of us already. So uh, I don't think uh, we should uh, uh, spend too much time on it, but I'm just sharing this here, right? So we all know, right, for if you set up a Gmail account, Google, uh, you can have email, you can use Gmail for your email. Uh, you can use docs for writing documents. You can use sheets for, uh, for uh, your spreadsheet work. You can use slides for creating your presentations. Uh, you can use your calendar uh, for uh, meeting, uh, you know, just managing your calendar. Uh, and then of course, you, you have these other things where you could use, uh, you can use contacts for managing your contacts and then, you know, meet or, and so on. You could use that uh, forms if you want to do surveys, questionnaires, so on. Um, so, uh, and then meeting is what we're using right now. Google Meet to talk to people, have conference calls. So Google, um, and I'm not here to, I'm not promoting Google. I'm just saying that, you know, just setting up a simple Gmail uh, gives you access to so many things. You can store things online, email. These are the office productivity things that people can become familiar with using docs, sheets, slides, calendar, uh, and uh, personal productivity. You can manage your contacts. And then there are a lot of other, other products that are available for free. Right, so uh, uh, I especially want to mention um, where is the list? Uh, Google lists, Google Keep. Right, so you can store your uh, 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 notes and things like that. You could uh, do that here, uh, and so you can add this as another tool for your uh, that if you want to just keep notes and so on, uh, you can make notes and keep them you can add reminders for yourself and so on so there are a lot of these tools available and of course uh, so you know you, you have your google keep you have your tasks you can you know create tasks and i'm, I'm showing you my bible college account so i don't use this but uh, for my personal account I, I use it so you can create tasks and set up reminders for yourself plus there are a lot of other add-on apps uh, that you could add you know there are lots of things that, that are available. Some are free, some are paid, um, that you could add to uh, your Google workspace and, uh, you know, just to improve productivity. Uh, but like we said, these, these, all of these apps are available for free. So um, at a very basic level, uh, for your church staff, for your ministry team, um, you can get everybody to use, you know, have a Gmail and get them all to use, you know, these pro these uh, apps and you can work very efficiently and, uh, you know, uh, take care of a lot of the office work by just by using these free products uh, available from Google, right? So I want to encourage all of us to think like that for your ministry. Uh, for uh, uh, your church work, get all the church staff to begin to use these products. And these are free, so you're not paying any annual subscription. You're not, uh, you know, uh, you're not paying a lot of money to Microsoft or anyone else to, you know, use their products. These are Google products, free. You can create documents, spreadsheets, uh, presentations, groups, interactions. A lot of things can happen. Are just with these products. So think that way, and uh, get everybody to use it. It takes. It may take a little bit of learning, but get everybody to use that. And so, uh, the other thing is, you don't need heavy-duty computers. Um, just simple computers that have internet connection. You can use these products, right? So you don't need to have large computers with large disk space and large memories. Um, you can just buy simple computers, cheap computers, laptops get them to use these products. You've got an office easily set up, ready to go, and people to be able to collaborate and work together just by using uh, these office productivity tools that are available for free from Google. Right? 
So that's uh, just wanted to start mention that as a way to get started. Uh, this is software for office work and making use of these apps. The next piece, of course, uh, in uh, using technology platforms is to make sure you have a good accounting or a financial management system in place. Right? Uh, that's very important for your ministry. You know, so we're talking about software systems for ministry. Uh, this is very important that you have a good accounting system in place. Now, you can uh, initially, I mean, if you're, if you're getting started in a very small way, you can manage this information in an Excel sheet. All right, maybe example, example. Uh, let's say you're getting your church started, you have a ministry started. Okay, you have one bank account. All transactions are coming in and out of that one bank account. Um, there may not be that many transactions. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you want to track what's happening, maybe a simple spreadsheet, uh, a Google spreadsheet uh, would be enough uh, to track what's coming in, what's going out, where the expenses are, give a summary. <laughs> you can manage with that for the initial period, right? So maybe the first year, your, your, your financial information is managed in a spreadsheet. Okay, not a problem because, you know, you're just starting off. Uh, but at some point, uh, the one, the information is going to get more. There are going to be more transactions, more people contributing, more, you know, off money coming in. Uh, more payments being made, etc. Second, you will want to search your data. You'll want to work with your data, uh, and then you know you you want to put your data under various heads. That means expenses for Sunday services, expenses for certain conference, expenses for certain uh, kinds of ministry. So you want to do all of that uh, bifurcation of information. And that's where, uh, you know, you would outgrow a simple spreadsheet and you would need a proper accounting software. So uh, um, in India, and of course, this could vary in different parts of the world, but I, you know, for in India, and uh, I would think even maybe in Nepal, um, uh, a, a, a software product that we, that is good for, you know, medium-sized, small to medium-sized organizations uh, is called Tally. I, th uh, I have mentioned this before, but Tally accounting software, right? So uh, T-A-L-L-Y. So Tally accounting software is what we use at All People's Church uh, right from the very beginning, uh, you know, right from the time when we were less than 50 people till today all kinds of things happening. Uh, so it's been very good for us. Uh, so whatever accounting software uh, is available in your part of the world you know, for your uh, needs, mm, of course you can use it. But what we are using is this product called Tally accounting software. And everything is entered into Tally. Uh, so, so that's the second thing. So one is, all your church staff, all your ministry staff are using uh, Office software. Of, um, I'm not talking about Microsoft Office, but the personal productivity, Office-related work software, like Word document, Excel sheet, presentation software, emailing, calendar, uh, task, notes, and groups, you know, interaction. All of that, they're using that. It makes your interactions very efficient. Secondly, for your office to manage your finances, you use a accounting package, accounting software, right? So make sure that you start doing that, um, uh, 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 I would say early on in your ministry. Um, so that from very, you know, from the early stages, you start putting inf information, your accounting information, in various categories then you can work with the data you can do analysis so you can say you know for this certain category 
how has been what's been the spending over the last you know three four years five years um what has been the income what's been the expense so you can you know generate those kinds of reports for your ministry and that will help you do an analysis of you know where and how and if you're using money properly and so on so that's something i would encourage uh, us to do the third um part of software that I'll just talk about, and then we will close off for today, is uh, people management. Uh, and so that means, how do we uh, manage people? You know, so especially now in a church or setting, you're talking about the congregation, right? Uh, you need a way to manage or to manage to store and to manage the contact information of your congregation members. These days, especially, you know, their proper names, their address, email, phone number. These are very basic things. You can add to it the birthday, the anniversary dates, right? This, this, this information about every person is, uh, is very important in a ministry in a church um, so that at any point in time you want to contact them, you have it available. Now, of course, you can store it on your phone, but then if it's on your phone, only you have access to it. Uh, but if you want to keep it as part of your church organization so that all the people are working together uh, can have access to it, can update it, and can use it to serve the people, then, then you know uh, that's very important. Now here again, if you're having 50 people, 100 people uh, in the congregation, yeah, a, a simple spreadsheet with this data is easy. It can be a shared Google spreadsheet and different people can see it and they can use that information to call people and uh, send them emails and all that. That's, that's very easy if it's a small number of people. Uh, but when you have a growing congregation with you know hundreds and maybe even thousands of people, it's good to have a software system to manage this, as well as to tr track interactions. You know, so if somebody called the person, if you have people who are to call the uh, the church people, just ask how they're doing. They can make a record that we called them on this date, and you know, this is what they said, or this is what their need was. So that can be recorded, and so for that, um, again, there are there are many systems available but what we are using uh, at EPC is a, a free product uh, called rock rms and I, I have shared this with you before um but i'll i'll, I'll go over it again uh, it's called rock rms and uh, uh, we have our own installation so we use rock rms for managing our church uh, but we also have Rock RMS for managing other kinds of data. So, for instance, uh, we have our own congregation people, uh, who people who have been part of APC. Then we have over, I think, 10,000 uh, pastors uh, from around the country in India. Uh, 10,000 some. Something like that. It's not an exact number, but 10,000 plus um, pastors from around India, uh, and uh, they are part of our what we call as an India Care project. So we try to care for these pastors, uh, and we have a team of people who will call them, who will speak to them, so on. So that's you know that's a large number in different languages. Then we have our Bible College. So. Um, Again, we have data of Bible college students, which again now was, you know, crossed over a thousand uh, people. Uh, so that's another set of data. So we have a congregation, we have India pastors, we have Bible college, uh, 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 and again, when we say congregation, we we include people who are attending, plus. Uh, those who have just contacted us, you know, uh, or not part of a congregation, but they are part of the uh, people who uh, reach out to us. Maybe they ask for our books or use our whatever. They they con contact us. Maybe they're just part of uh, like the visiting the crowds. 
let's see. So how do we manage all this data? And the numbers are in, in, in thousand plus, uh, basically in thousands of people. Uh, how do we manage the data? So for that, I would definitely recommend uh, this product. Uh, I will share the screen and you have seen this before, but I will share it again and I'll take you a little bit into what we are doing. Um, right, so. Okay, so we have this, uh, there is this product, Rock RMS. Uh, it's a church management uh, software and um, uh, it's available for free. Now you could uh, download it for free and uh, 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 have your own, own installation. So a lot of churches around the world who use it. Uh, um, you can download it and uh, uh, ins have your own inst installation or you can use their hosted uh, solution. Uh, so there's this pricing here that they have and they can, you know, they can uh, customize it for uh, you and host it for you. Uh, if you pay uh, pay some amount of money, right? So we have our own um, downloaded version of Rock RMS uh, that we run, and then we uh, we've customized. Our IT team has customized, so you can download Rock, you can download the product, and uh, you can use uh, use this product if you know your own IT team can manage it or of course you can uh, take their hosted solution and uh, you know um, pay them for for that amount okay but this is a good product that um, I would recommend uh, to manage church information now so um, Okay, um, I wanted to log into Rock, but I'm actually, you know, in a different uh, user mode. So let's see now. Okay, so this is Rock RMS. This is our installation of Rock. Um, so as soon as I log in, I'm able to see people's birthdays. So these people, uh, it's their birthday today. Right, so I can uh, message these people, which I will do today after the call. I will message these people to wish them for their birthday. You know, so this is a very nice thing to do. It's a very simple thing, uh, but it's a nice thing. So imagine, uh, uh, you know, now we do have a member care team, which is uh, people who do this, and uh, you know, for those of them who are in Bangalore, we, you know, we work one month ahead. Uh, to make sure that on their birthday they will receive something from the church. So this year, we are sending a cake to every person. So these these one, two, three, these three people will receive a cake today from the church sent to their house. Uh, this person is not, uh, you know, is not. So these people are in Bangalore because they're part of South Central. Uh, this this person is not in Bangalore, so she won't be getting a cake. But I'm just saying, you know, we can wish them, you know, we can greet them. And then we have a member care team that takes care of other things that is done. And if there's anybody's anniversaries today, their names will show up here. So I could even, uh, uh, you know, uh, wish people uh, for their anniversaries, right? So this is a very nice thing. You know, you just log in and your home screen, you're able to do this right away, uh, wish people. Now. Uh, we have, of course, uh, you know, uh, all our data here and this separate version installation for uh, India Care and a separate installation for our Bible College. And we continue to customize it to, you know, to do things. But just to show you some of the features. So, so if I uh, search for somebody, uh, I can search for their name and it will take me straight away to that person's details right so i see okay this person that's his birthday and uh, you know email id mobile number etc and 
uh, you know, get, uh, you know, you can see his wife, and children, home address, and uh, this person verified eight months ago, verified the details and so on, right? Uh, so, so these uh, these things are here. Now, there are a lot of other things that we could use this product for. You know, the membership. You know, whether they're going through various you know steps or things that you want them to go through. Um, for students, those who apply for Bible College, they'll have a BC profile, um, other other pieces of information. Now, we haven't, we're not using all of this at the moment. Uh, benevolence can track their contributions and so on. We're not using all that. We just right now mainly using it to maintain their information and um, also to track, you know, interactions from the church office with them and uh, membership related things like the membership certificates or water baptism, you know, as and when they do it, we, we uh, record that here, right? Now, so I'm just showing you this person, and then we put tags. Uh, we can, you know, you can create as many tags as you want so that if you want to pull out data for those who are fathers, you can pull it out, those who are husbands, now those who maybe are church staff or which location they're attending, uh, members and so on. So you can pull out information, uh, you can do that. So just to give you an idea, um, you can create views on the data. So this is some views that uh, you can create on the data. One is you can look for people who are part in Bangalore, those who are part of, uh, and within Bangalore, you can you know uh, pull up people with, the, with, you can pull up an anniversary list, birthday list. Uh, you can pull up people from, you know, which congregation. You know, uh, so here you're doing all this work with data very easily. Um, those are first time visitors, those who are attending live groups. If you want to look at women, you want to look at children, uh, you know, um, those who are part of Bible college. So, on. so you can create a lot of uh, reports, views on the data and uh, work with that, you know, so you can easily generate that data. And then you, uh, uh, of course, access to this data is restricted only to the people who are actually working with the data so uh, it'll be our pastors uh, our pa only our pastors can see this data this particular site and we have what we call as a member care team that means the other ones who are calling people for their birthdays or who are you know regularly calling people so only they have access to this not not everybody in the church office has access to um, this portal, you know, uh, only those who are authorized and uh, and they be very, very careful so that not everybody uses this data. Okay, so um, so what our member care team does, for example, is they have this birthday list or this anniversary list. They will pull it out one month before, and they will plan on. Okay, these are the people who are having birthdays coming up, anniversaries coming up. This is the address. We're going to deliver a cake. Uh, are we going to deliver a certain gift um, to these people? So that's their responsibility to make sure that the gifts go. You know, this all made ready one month ahead. Uh, so all the arrangements are made so that on their day, on their birthday, on their anniversary, they get a gift. You know, so that's a simple thing. But you can do that when you have this data available for you. You can work uh, ahead of time just to make sure things happen on time. Similarly, we have all the Bible college data here, students available for us. We can look at it country-wise and uh, uh, we can you know, work with uh, our Bible college data as well, all right? So let me stop sharing. So this, um, this church management system or uh, people management, I, I'll just call it people management, which uh, has to do with managing church people data or other kinds of data. Like I said, in our case, we have, we have, we're looking at pastors, we're looking at Bible college students, managing their data and working with that data is very important for any ministry. And so uh, I would recommend uh, having a software system in place um, right from the early stages. Now, you know, when, when you have small numbers, an Excel sheet will do, but it's always good to think 
uh, you know, what will I do when there are hundreds of people? How will I be able to work with their contact information, their data? And so uh, you can do that. Now, uh, there's a lot of work we have to do in this area. I'll just mention it and uh, we will close. For instance, when you have all this data, some of the things that we are thinking about is, uh, for our church people data, we're thinking about helping people find jobs. So right now, you know, um, we have all the people. Now we are, you know, part of what we want to do, and we will get to it hopefully uh, later this year or even next year maybe, is we want to create a place within that environment. So first of all, we're going to make this individual's data available to themselves so that they can update their own records if their address changes or email ID or mobile number changes. People can come and maintain their own personal information. But then when they log into other community portal, the church community portal, uh, we want to create a place where they can look for jobs. So if people are working in companies. Uh, if they, they have job openings there, they can post it here in the community portal and people are part of the community portal can become of a, hey, there are jobs available. Maybe I can reach out to so-and-so. Or um, if people indicate their experience, their expertise, their capabilities, others may be able to search for them, find them, and contact them saying, hey, I have this job opening. Would you be interested? So that's one thing we can do. Uh, another area, of course, in our context, uh, which is, uh, is, is this whole marriage thing, you know, we always have parents approaching us saying, you know, can you find somebody for my daughter? Can you find somebody for my son? And then, you know, pastors, I know it, this may not happen in other parts of the world, but, you know, in India, it's like that, you know, parents approach the pastor or the pastors saying, you know, please help find uh, somebody. Uh, and so if we have uh, kind of like a marriage matrimonial thing, you know, which, which is common. Um, then, you know, people put their profile, they're able to, you know, within restricted access, they are able to, um, you know, they may not know somebody who's in another other location or some other, uh, you know, um, maybe they moved to another city, or whatever, but if you have a matrimonial exchange kind of thing, they, you know, something can be facilitated. Of course, we are not going to make decisions on that, but just to facilitate connect, connections happening uh, within a, a safe environment can also happen. So uh, a lot of things can be done once you have the data, clean data, uh, you can create community around it and, and provide certain services that help the community uh, in areas of their need, right? So. Uh, yeah, so I just wanted to start thinking about it where you can use software systems or technology platforms for your ministry and do useful things, right? And uh, of course, you need uh, technical people, you need to have IT staff. Uh, you can start with some volunteers, and then later on, you know, when you're able to, you can hire people to work full time for the church. Uh, you know, working with all the software and creating these things that will be useful for the people. Okay, uh, so we will stop here and I will, we will continue this next week. We'll talk about other, uh, maybe a little bit more on this people management, uh, uh, managing people's data. And uh, I will mention towards the end about uh, uh, confidentiality and uh, uh, privacy of data, right? That's very important, right? So we are very careful. Whenever people join us, we have them to sign uh, part of their uh, joining our staff as they have to sign off that they will keep all the information very confidential. Then we only give access to various portals to the people who need access or are going to work with it, you know, like member care and so on. Uh, so it's not open to everybody. Um, so that is very important, the confidentiality and privacy of people's data. So but people shouldn't feel um, their data is being misused in any way. Uh, so those are things we have to think about. And I'll, I'll mention that towards the end of this chapter. OK. Um, all right, let's wrap up. Are there any questions, any thoughts here on this?
Okay. Uh, let's pray and we'll wrap up. We'll continue this next week. Talk a little bit more on managing people data and how we handle that. Could somebody close in prayer, please? Maybe, um, um, yeah. Well, Karen, Karen prayed in the morning. Uh, okay. Um, Aaron, can you pray? Oh, your mic is not okay. So, um, Dave, can you pray and dismiss us, please? Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for this time. Once again, Lord Jesus, we thank you that we had this opportunity to, to learn it <clears throat> from the best of God, um, as each one of us to uh, give us wisdom and knowledge, Lord God, to use the technology that has been developed, Lord God, for to serve the people more um, in such a way that they, it, it would be easy for all of us to. We do ministry work, but uh, I just want to be from this time. We thank you for this time. We thank you and bless the rest of the day. You know, my name is Jesus. I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and enjoy the weekend. I'll see you next week. God bless. Bye now.